All right, again, welcome to the GDC Technology Theater here at the NVIDIA booth. We're going to get started with our own Stephen Jones. He's going to talk about Tegra Profile Revealed. So anybody in the aisles, please come down, take a seat. We're going to get started. All right, thank you. Thanks. Uh, hi guys, um, my name is Stephen Jones, product line manager here at NVIDIA. I'm responsible for our uh, mobile software developer tools. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of, of what we offer for uh, Tegra Android development and uh, then give you an introduction to our latest tool, uh, the Tegra Profiler. Um, <coughs> so what we're really trying to do at NVIDIA in our mobile uh, tools <coughs> for Tegra is kind of provide a whole ecosystem uh, for game developers. So this is end-to-end -end, uh, from setting up your, your development environment to building your applications to debugging in whatever platform you see fit to graphics profiling, debugging, and then finally uh, CPU profiling with our, our, our Tegra profiler. So what I'm going to do is kind of walk through our selection of tools here and it kind of comes together as a set of puzzle pieces so at the top level we have what we call the Tegra Android developer pack this is a solution that's available for Windows OS X and Linux and if you've ever installed a, an Android development environment what this does it really simplifies bringing that together you know typically you have to go and download the Android SDK and NDK or Sigwind drivers all kinds of different things so this is a single download you bring it down to your device, you run it, 30 minutes, you're up and running developing for Android. Uh, it really makes things simple. <coughs> As Google updates their, their NDK, their SDK, uh, we provide updated versions that just update, keep you up and running with the latest stuff. So the next component is what we call the Tegra Android Toolkit. So this is kind of your standard SDK. It's full of uh, the tools you need for Tegra Android development. Again, graphics debugging, CPU debugging, profiling, uh, documentation uh, for Android, Android lifecycle, and Tegra specific documentation, as well as samples. Uh, you know, this is uh, sample code um, that you can use kind of across uh, Android development, but specifically for, for Tegra development. And the final piece of the puzzle, we put together Android OS images that are specific, uh, targeted specifically for debugging. So they're pre-configured to work with our developer tools. So you bring these three items together and it kind of completes the, the puzzle of Android development, if you will. Um, online, on uh, what we call our DevZone, developer.nvidia.com, you can register for the Tegra, Tegra developer program. You'll get no email notifications of updates uh, to any component that's listed here and just really simplifies the process of, of developing for Android, uh, native Android specifically, so C and C++ development. So let's talk a little bit about some of the tools that we provide for Android development. Uh, so on the debugging side, we have the <coughs> NVIDIA Debug Manager. So this is a, a plugin for Eclipse that really just provides plug and play Android debugging uh, within Eclipse. Um, as I said, you install our Tegra Android development pack, which we affectionately call TADP. Um, this is ready to go. It installs an Eclipse environment for you. You double click it, it's up and running. Imports all our samples into the Eclipse workspace immediately. You can set breakpoints in both Java and native code. It's nothing that's not available that you can go download and configure, but we save you the hassle of doing all that configuration, figuring out what to, what to download and uh, where to um, to apply your effort. Uh, next we have PerfHUDES. So if you're familiar with our, our PC tools, we have a, call, a tool called PerfHUD that runs on the PC. It's been used by game developers for years. Uh, this is a similar, similar tool. It's actually not a HUD, but it is designed for OpenGL ES development. And it allows you to go in, debug uh, your frame, see exactly what's going on across all your draw calls on a, on a frame. Uh, allows you to uh, profile each individual draw call identifying bottlenecks within the code. And then we also have automated bottleneck an, uh, analysis. So this is specific directed tests that you can apply, uh, requires no modification to your code. That will kind of give you an idea, are you, are you CPU bound, are you GPU bound? Gives you an idea where to place your, your efforts. Um, 
one of the latest features we've added to Perf IDS is the ability to edit shaders at runtime. So this is a pretty powerful feature that you know allows you to go in and make changes to your shaders, upload them directly to the device, and see exactly how they perform. So this can either be a, a, a profiling tool, so you can see how changes affect your frame rate, or a debugging tool if you're seeing rendering errors. And finally, we have our Tegra Profiler. So this is a latest tool that we've, uh, we've introduced, and I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that today. Uh, but this tool is designed for CPU profiling across the Tegra 3 uh, quad-core architecture. So it, it will uh, show you CPU usage across your cores. It'll tell you what's going on on that fifth uh, shadow core or companion core or, or ninja core, whatever they're, they're calling it this week. Um, and this is a full <coughs> sampling profiler, so it's going to identify hot spots within your, in, in your code and uh, that type of thing. So we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, Tegra profiler. Um, so again, um, it's designed to help you utilize your, fully utilize the, your CPU. It's designed to allow you to go in and find those critical sections of your code that are eating up uh, your performance, you know, really identifying how to get the, the most out of your applications. Has hardware counters. You can go in and grab um, L1, L2 cache information, correlate that back to uh, actual uh, the call paths in the code. And you can see this either uh, in a, a top-down view where you see everywhere that calls a particular function or what we call a bottom-up view where it shows a function, how much time that function is taking on the CPU, and then all of the, the paths where that one particular function is called. We're set up to really easily deploy a, a, a um, uh, sorry, <laughs> easily prepare a device for, for profiling. So this is, you know, you can plug in your, your, your Tegra-based device, uh, easily copy over the, uh, the information, and then um, uh, finally deploying applications set up there uh, as well. So just a quick overview. As I said, the uh, Tegra profiler is a, er, uh, is a sampling profiler. I'm sure everyone's aware of what a sampling profiler is, but just kind of a quick overview. You know, a sampling profiler is going to occasionally just take a peek at what's going on uh, in, your, in your application. <coughs> it has really low overhead. It's not going to cost much in terms of performance or, or, or memory. Uh, you can look system-wide. So you don't have to look at a single application. You can kind of uh, explore what's going on in, in DLLs, in uh, driver land, uh, third-party libraries, that type thing. We're also looking at uh, per line. Uh, so uh, you can see on a, a given line in your code just, just how expensive that is, uh, not per, per function, which is what you'll get from an uh, instrumentation profiler. Um, and it works on production code. You can just compile an application. As long as the symbols are available, you can go uh, grab that information and, uh, and see what's going on there. Some of the cons with the sampling profiler, it's not always 100% accurate. Since it's a statistical model and it's kind of looking at a fixed sampling rate, um, it's, it may miss specific events. <coughs> for, this, for similar reasons, revol results may vary between executions. You may run it once and you get a hit in one function and the next time you might get 100 hits in that one function. And then again, sampling rate is uh, huge as well. Uh, the, uh, more you're sampling, the better your results will be, uh, but that's going to increase the overhead just a little bit. So this is versus a, a code instrumentation type profiler that will go in and either modify your source or modify your binary to measure similar things. It's going to be more accurate, but there's going to be a lot more overhead associated with it. So here, I'm going to switch over and just kind of give you, i got a video of, of the Tegra profiler in action, uh, give you guys a, a taste of, of how it works. And video's not showing up. Second. Ah. There 
There we go. All right, sorry about that. Um, so this is the Tegra profiler. It starts off pretty basic. This is a Windows application. <coughs> this is where you select uh, your, your target device, the device you're going to actually be profiling. You can choose either to deploy an APK from your, uh, from your host platform, or you can select something that already exists on the device. Makes it really easy to either use what's there or, or move ahead. Sampling, this is where you can choose exactly what your sampling rate is, what items you're going to, to sample. If you're going to grab you know, L2-1, L2 cache information. And then here you determine how you're going to capture. You can either uh, just immediately start a capture. You can wait and manually start it, like after a, a startup period in your game, or after a period of time. So after you've configured, you launch the application, it's going to go and collect uh, various statistics uh, about the application that's, uh, th that's running. Here we're just kind of waiting to start sampling until the app reaches an interesting place. Started, stop sampling. And I think maybe we grabbed uh, maybe eight, ten seconds of information there. But you can see in this top counter section, it's going to show you the CPU usage uh, during the sampling period. <coughs> you can see uh, the, the count of samples that occurred in each of those cores over on the right-hand side. Um, also show, just in general, how fully each core was utilized. So this application was actually fairly efficient across the, the entire CPU. Down here, this is our uh, top-down view of the, uh, the actual sampled call stack. You can kind of expand the tree. And you can see here, it breaks out either uh, how expensive your uh, individual function was within that particular call or how expensive the entire tree was. And that's represented out here in the graph, where the black dots really indicate the function itself, and gray dots or gray indicators indicate um, all <coughs> that the activity happened in child functions. Here we can hide low impact functions. So if you don't really care about functions that take you know, 0.01% or that really didn't have many samples, we can get that out of the way. And then we can switch to the bottom up view that I mentioned. So instead of coming from the top down, you know, this is really bottom up. This will show you your, uh, the functions and then all of the call paths that go into an individual function. So one call path may be significantly more expensive than another, called more frequently. So that's kind of a quick overview. Talk a little bit about some of the limitations of the tool right now. So uh, and these are all limitations we're trying to address, make it as easy for developers to, to work with the tool. Um, right now, when you're building for Android, NDK build automatically strips symbols by default. So it's really a simple modification to NDK build. Um, we need symbols to do the backtrace. Future versions of the tool that you know, we're hoping to release at the end of this month will be able to look up symbols on the host device instead of on the, the target device. So that'll really kind of simplify that problem. Um, to do proper backtrace, we do have to add a couple flags, the uh, F, uh, no emit frame pointer and the no thumb. Uh, these are required in order to properly calculate the backtrace information. Uh, compiler optimizations can sometimes break the backtrace if you're getting an inline function, something like that. Uh, can kind of throw things off, so something to be aware of. And right now, only code compiled with GCC is supported. This is kind of an issue because GCC doesn't do a great job of generating neon code right now. Uh, something that's, um, uh, that is available on the Tegra 3 devices. A lot of developers are using Clang or something like that to generate neon code. And when you do that, it kind of it breaks the Tegra profiler. Um, give you a quick idea of the roadmap and things we're planning to do with the Tegra profiler. So right now, the 1.0 version is out. Uh, that was the demo I gave you today. <coughs> We're moving forward to the 1.1 version, hoping to release that by the end of this month. This adds some really neat features. Um, we're going to have uh, the ability to see, uh, identify individual threads across uh, the various CPU cores. You're going to see the state for each individual thread, so you can see uh, this thread is, is blocked and uh, who's, who's blocking it, exactly what's going on across threads. We're going to be able to correlate OpenGLS frames kind of across your entire sample, so it uses 
uh, various frame markers, uh, or OpenGL ES API calls to uh, identify the frames. It'll tell it'll identify uh, spikes in your uh, in any given frame. So if one one frame takes longer than another, you can look back and correlate that to the code. Um, and finally, we've added uh, ability to do custom annotations. So this is um, <coughs> adding either range markers or specific events to your code that show up on the timeline. You can see what else is going on. Again, that should be out by the end of this month. From there, we're moving forward. We're gonna, uh, this, right now, this is a Windows-only app. We're going to move forward and add support for uh, Mac OS X and uh, Linux. We're also going to add the ability to add, correlate the profiling data to source code. So similar to VTune or something like that, where you actually see the source code. And to the left, you have a gutter that shows you on a per line basis exactly um, <coughs> the, uh, how much a particular line has utilized the CPU. And there's a number of things we're planning for the future. We don't have these quite, uh, quite mapped out yet, but we're looking to uh, get full integration into Visual Studio with some of our other tools. Uh, and a lot of developers really like working in Visual Studio. We're trying to bring as many tools to Visual Studio as possible, uh, but we'll continue to maintain a standalone version. Uh, we want the ability to compare pro profiling results. So uh, if you're going to run in, in kind of a QA environment or make, uh, make changes to your code, you can compare results across runs and see if, if changes you've made have significantly affected your profiling results. Um, <coughs> we want to add system-wide sampling so we can see more what's going on in the system. Maybe there's other, other processes that are affecting your, your game or your app. Um, also adding locks and weights analysis. So. Um, Right now, we can see the th we'll be able to see the thread state with the next release. But we really want to see what's actually holding up a thread, what it's waiting on, that type thing. Um, and then moving forward, adding you know, perhaps an expert system, kind of providing recommendations uh, for n known issues, known problems, things we've identified in the code. And finally, an instrumenting profiler, um, just to really get into those uh, the down and dirty details. So that's it. That's kind of an overview of our tools, Integra Profiler. Any questions?